Hello, welcome to Sports Kingdom Moments. Glad you could join us on this Saturday. We are in Colossians uh, chapter 4, verses 2 to 6 in our ESV Bible here, and we are excited to be able to jump into it today. We're, we're getting at the end of the letter this kind of final instructions before Paul gives his final greeting. Uh, you know, and in these final final instructions, we, we have just to me was kind of amazing that, that this is where still Paul is after so much time. It just shows his heart and his desire to to, to want to continue to grow. Uh, but as we jump into it, there's this idea that that is I'm again I'm I'm often at, at practices and many different things with the student athletes. Hopefully, we'll be back to that one day uh, if we actually get back to all that, which I gotta believe at some point we will. But, but anyway, while, while I'm there, there's, there's this instruction again that, that we need to make the most of every rep, that there's just a continual desire to grow, a continual hunger, there's, that you're always learning, you're always growing. It, it's amazing to me that, that the guys who are most likely to move on are those who have a work ethic and a hunger that want to continue to drill and continue to practice and continue to watch more film it, that there's just a hunger to, to want more knowledge, more understanding, to get their body more in shape. A any little you know, advantage that they can gain, they're looking to gain it. And so when they're on the side, they're, they're getting mental reps and they're coaching up their teammates. And when they're out there, they're... I've watched the light bulb go off on, on certain guys and I've watched it go on on certain guys is, is really what I mean. It's the, the light bulb goes on and... and suddenly they're seeing things completely different. The game slows down. There's an understanding of things. There's a purpose in things. They understand how things fit out on the field. That if I see what they're trying to do to us, I immediately know where I fit in here. And and, and I wondered, do, do we have that same kind of hunger spiritually? Do, do we, we, we have an advocate in the Lord and, and in his spirit. We also have, have an enemy. And, and we have one that wants to continue to come at us. Are, are we learning how he fights us? Not that I need to know him. I need to know Jesus. But I need to know where, where I'm weak, where I need more Jesus. I, I need to know where I haven't fully understood things. I need to continue to grow. I need to learn how to, to allow my, my advocate to, to help and, and, and to instruct and to guide me. And I, I need to know where, where, where my enemy is in the type of things and the type of strategies he uses against me. Especially when I, when I feel like I've lost again and again, I need to learn how to fight differently. I mean, if you've played the same team in the same, in high school, we played a, what was a single wing offense, which meant there really wasn't a quarterback. The ball would get snapped. They had a lot of different motions and I played out on the edge at a corner and, and your only help was, was that the guys kind of working from you inward didn't get caught up and washed out because if they did then the whole thing was coming around and you were going to be one against about five that were coming around an edge well, we played them a number of years and, and it was frustrating every year because the, the guy that was the linebacker inside me fell for it every time I don't blame him for it but but I watched our coach when he had some different folks figure it out later and taught them differently. When they understood it and, and they did the things they were supposed to do, then they had great success at stopping it. But, but gosh, the few years that I was there, we, we hadn't figured it out yet. Well, sometimes I think we we just, oh, I failed at that again, and I've got to repent of, of that sin again, and, and, and we don't ever try something different. And, and not only there, but where we've had success, do I want to continue to have more success? Do I want to continue to grow even further? Or am I content just to stay here? When Paul talks about being content in Philippians, he's not talking about that kind of content where we're just not going to grow anymore. He talked about being content in his circumstances, not dictating his joy and his peace and his happiness, that, that he was always striving and straining to grow. The contentment was that of, God, when you've given me plenty, that's enough. And when I don't have very much, it's enough that I know that you've given me what I need to do the things you have me to do. And so it's different than this. And I think we I think we just, by osmosis, just roll the ball out there and, and hope for the best spiritually versus a desire to prayerfully, intentionally, 
digging into the Word, looking to grow, learn, praying for understanding and wisdom, and and surrounding ourselves with folks who do things well that we don't, and vice versa. That we, we just I don't see us look to grow like that. And I don't really get why. And, and so my prayer is that as, as we read Paul's words here, we, we begin to see some of how he operates. So verse 2, continue steadfastly in prayer. Would, would that describe your prayer life ever? Are, are you steadfast in your prayer life? I'll, I'll confess, prayer, prayer is not the easiest of the ones for me to do. Uh, it's getting better. Uh, I'm, I'm learning. But... but you know, much easier to go do something, much easier to dig into God's Word, much easier uh, prayer, prayer puts me in a different position. Steadfastly, continue. So if you're not, haven't started, then start being steadfast in prayer. And if that has been you, continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. And it's so, so it's a continual, it's steadfast, it's watchful, it is... Full of our thanksgiving is always something that Paul adds when we're to pray. When in chapter 4, Philippians, don't be anxious about anything. The answer to that is just to pray with thanksgiving. It's to pour into him. And so, so again, we have this continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. At the same time, pray also for us. What you would get, okay, we should be praying for I'm that church. I want to be praying for Paul. He's in, in prison and in a difficult spot. But look at what he asked for. He doesn't ask for to get out. He doesn't ask for things to get easier. He wants them to pray for them that God may open to us a door for the word to declare the mystery of Christ on account of which I am in prison, that I may make it clear which is how I ought to speak. He wants them to pray that he have open opportunities to share Jesus with the guards, with Caesar, with, with the leaders of, of Rome in a clear, concise way that folks would, would, would hear Jesus and, and, and come to know Jesus. And Paul, who shared the gospel message by this time, probably more than any human being on the planet, is still asking that they would pray for the openings because we understand God's the one who does the work. It's not our cleverness. But he also wants to make sure that he... He speaks in the right way, with the right tone, clearly, that, that they would hear. Gosh, there, there's just a humble, that, that, that's, your, that's your star ace player just asking for prayer that, that he can go out and, and accomplish the things that, that he's supposed to do it and has done many times before, but wanting to get better, wanting to do it at its best, wanting to do it as clearly and plainly and simply and of God as possible that he can share it. Are, are, are we praying that for one another? Are we even thinking of sharing the gospel with somebody, let alone, you know, we, we've got all reason to want people to pray for us if we haven't shared it very often. He, he's saying, I don't care how many times you've shared it, you should, should have people praying over you to, to do such. Walk in wisdom toward outsiders, making the best use of the time. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. So he goes from asking, pray for me, then, then really talking about us and, and that we need to be looking for those opportunities and, and we need God's wisdom and, and we need to understand the difference between those that, that don't know Jesus that live among us, whose citizenship is here. But ours is not here, ours is in heaven and that we are to be sharing the reason of the hope that is in us. We're, we're to be talking about Jesus with these folks. And we need to know how to speak to them and, and, and what they need to hear and, and how to say it and, and, and to do it in love and with salt. And, and So I'll read these two verses again. Walk in wisdom toward outsiders, making the best use of the time. So is there time for us just to kind of talk about the local football game and what's going on and there's time for that, but it should always be moving towards when we're going to have an opportunity to share about Jesus. It should always be, we should always be looking for that inroad. What did they just share that, that shows that they're lacking a peace and a hope and an understanding in life that, that I know Jesus is the answer to that in my life, that I can share. I'm ready, looking for that opening and, and wanting to make use of that time. Yes, there's time just to kind of cut up and, and be a friend and to love on them then there's a time to share the hope that's in me. Otherwise, I'm not really being a friend. Uh, verse 6, again, is let your speech be gracious, seasoned with salt, that, that I don't just lambast, I don't just, that I'm looking 
I'm praying. How, how do I share this, Lord? When do I bring this up? How do I bring it up? Lord, I, I want to bring it up. It's my drive to bring it up. I'm, I'm in your word and I'm praying. I got people praying so I can have the opportunity to tell people. Is that part of our day to day? Did you wake up with, I got this plan. I've got this neighbor that I care about. And it's a Saturday and I'm going to see him out at the little kids soccer games. Or I'm going to see him while we're doing yard work beside each other. I'm going to see him at the tailgate or, or whatever's coming up. Am I building towards being able to share that? Paul's in, in jail. If anybody's, he can say, give a pass to, but but he's even maybe more strategically trying to figure out how, how can I get in front of these folks? I know where this is headed. I'm going to end up with a trial. I'm going to be in front of Caesar. I'm going to have my chance. I want to make sure that I communicate clearly. Is that a part of us? Is Jesus... Your one true hope. Is is he that which you can't help but talk about? I, I assure you that, that, that if you really understood the life that he gave you, I mean, if somebody gave you an organ and saved your life, you'd want to tell people about it. And you'd want to learn who that person is and tell people about that person. Well, well, Jesus has given us life, life abundantly. If we're really living in that life, we can't not tell people about Jesus. I, I it, I just, it baffles me, and, and I've got so few people that I really know that, that I know are telling people that, that really care about their neighbors, and, and yet we, we all claim to follow Jesus, and, and I don't quite know how we put those together, and this isn't a judgment talk. i just trying to figure out how that connects. If Jesus really is who he says he is in here, and, and he's that in my life, and I don't know how we're not geared toward learning and figuring and wanting the next rep, learning what we can from one another, watching your rep, wanting to get my rep on the field to, to do it right, to share accurately who Jesus is. I, I pray that if you make it to worship tomorrow in a place, which I pray you do, part of that would be just that, that we come and we praise Jesus together, but you're equipped further, encouraged deeper to go out and share that with somebody, to love that into somebody. But anyway, I am praying for you. I'm rooting for you. I want to see us help encourage you. Again, I watched, have watched enough athletic practices. I want to figure out how we help each other in these things. And that we can't wait to get together to push and encourage and, and spur one another on. As the author in Hebrews tells us in, in Hebrews 10, 24 and 25. Um, but I pray for you. Let me pray now. Heavenly Father, we thank you and love you. Give us Hearts that long to know you more fully and more deeply. Humility that, that knows we don't have it figured out. That we want to grow more and more into an understanding of the mystery of, of who you are and the amazement of the grace that you've provided and the righteousness that was not our own that you put upon us, but, but that we know what it is to live for you, to surrender ourselves fully, to, to have our hope not in the things of this world, but what is to come. Fill us, surround us, Give us brothers and sisters that we can be praying for that are intentional in these things, that are growing in you in these things, and that we would be right there. And, Lord, that we couldn't wait for the next opportunity. Give us eyes to see that next opportunity, and may it come quickly. And may we be found ready to share with, with gentleness, meekness, wisdom, courage, boldness, the things of, of you, the things of the kingdom of God that, that, that are all about us following you fully and giving you the glory and honor. We praise in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank you all so much, and you all have just a beautiful rest of your Saturday.